How's it going everybody? Austin Carter here with another video. Looking through my social media recently, I'm still getting a ton of questions about how I finish up my leather projects. What I mean by that is basically the process on how I dye, paint, seal, and antique them. Um, a lot of people seem to be just kind of um, either uninformed or really nervous about this step and I understand because you've done a ton of tooling and a ton of work on a project and the last thing you want to do is ruin it by either missing a step or not having antique set correctly or having paint and dye smear everywhere. And so what I intend to do with this video is show you how I go about that process. So a couple of videos ago, if you watched my Tooling Tuesday on how to uh, tool up a Indian skull with headdress, I'm just going to paint that project. So here I have it right here. Um, in this video I'm going to show you every process that I take from painting and dyeing to sealing and teaking and finishing the project. So hopefully with this video I clear up a bunch of the either misinformation or doubt so that you can finish off projects confident and um, create wonderful pieces of art. So I hope you all stick around and enjoy this video. As stated earlier, I'm going to be dyeing, painting, and antiquing my previous Tool and Tuesday project, the Skull and Headdress. I used Fibing's Pro Dyes for this tutorial, along with EcoFlow Cova Color Paints, Fibing's Tan Coat for the sealer, and Fibing's Antique Paste. I start by dyeing the background first. I choose dye over paints when I can because dye tends to seep into the leather deeper and will last longer than paints. While dyeing, I like using a medium sized fine point paintbrush. This allows me to get deeper into the corners of the projects. Always remember to take your time while you dye and be very conscientious of where your paintbrush tip is at all times. Usually, once I have dyed around the border of the project, I'll go back with either a Q-tip or dauber, depending on the space I need to cover, and finish laying down the dye. If needed, apply a second layer of dye. Next, using red dye, I start covering the headdress feathers. As you can see, I don't go all the way to the tip of the feathers because I'll be painting those later on.
A time saving tip to use is when you're applying a color, go ahead and paint or dye everything that needs that particular color. This will save you tons of time by not going back and forth between colors. Notice the location I keep my dye and paint throughout the video. I like to keep it above the project instead of below it, just in case an accident happens and a container spills. Hopefully the spill will happen away from the project, saving hours of hard work. After all dyeing is finished, I move to painting. I dye before I paint because it is way easier to paint over dyed areas if need be. Applying dye over paint will look unsightly and cause the dye to run. Using the EcoFlow white, I paint the skull, headdress, and feathers. These EcoFlow paints I'm using are water-based and tend to seep into the leather better than acrylic paints, which tend to just stay on the surface. For certain paint colors, multiple layers may be needed due to the consistency of the paint. Whites and yellows generally need multiple layers. Before applying more layers, be sure the previous coat is dry. The goal is to build up layers so that you get a pleasing consistency.
Before moving forward, I'd like to thank this video's sponsor, BenQ. BenQ sent me one of their e-reading desk lamps to utilize in my shop about two months ago, and let me say, it has been an eye saver. As we crafters know, lighting is very important for what we do, and BenQ recognized this when they contacted me. Since receiving the lamp, I've been highly impressed with its construction, functionality, sleek design, and ease of use. Weighing nearly 10.5 pounds, the desk lamp is constructed with aluminum and zinc alloys, which gives the lamp a very sturdy feel. This lamp comes fully loaded with all kinds of technological features, including a flicker-free LED light that offers constant and even lighting, an ambient light sensor, and a curved light guide module, which widens the illumination area. The BenQ desk lamp has the touch on and off feature and a high quality adjustment knob to set the lighting to fit your needs. Ranging from 2700 to 5700 Kelvin, this lamp has provided me tons of light whether I'm drawing, tooling, or stitching. But as you can see, the uses are endless. A big thank you to BenQ for supporting what I do, and if you're interested in this desk lamp, you can learn more by clicking the links in the description. This is a lamp I stand behind. After all dye and paint have completely dried, it's time to add the protective sealer on the project. I use a dauber to do this, and before I begin, I burn off the fuzzies so that they don't get sealed to the project. If you use antique, they will show up and make the project look really bad. I use tan coat as my sealer and apply an even and generous layer to the project. Let this completely dry before moving on. After the tan coat is dry, I take another dauber and apply an even coat of antique paste. The goal is to get the antique into every cut you make so that all of the detail is revealed. I use folded paper towels to immediately wipe away the excess antique from the project. If you need to, use a Q-tip to clean out excess antique from the small spaces. The very last step I do is lay down a final layer of tan coat. This not only seals the project, but also brightens it up. If you're liking what I'm doing with the channel, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing this video. I hope this video has helped, and as always, y'all have a great day.